a show today. The countdown to The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, is on. It hits theaters on December 14th, and today we get a chance to talk with one of the film stars. Please welcome, it's our honor to say hello to Richard Armitage. <laughs> That's the Canadian way. I love yes. You have to dip. All <laughs> Canadian talk show hosts have to be dipped. <laughs> we like that. How welcome. Thank you so much. Have you been to Canada before? No, this is my first time. Really? What do you think of it so far? Do you know what? The guy at immigration gave me a smile and said hello like I was a human being, so I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's talk about your character and let me get the, the if you're, okay, first of all, how do you play a dwarf at 6'2"? That, that was my question when, when I went in to meet Peter, I was like, I couldn't... Peter Jackson, yeah, the director, Peter Jackson. Right? I couldn't, I couldn't quite work out why I was there. Um, but they'd written a scene for, for, the, for the character which really kind of encompassed everything he was and, and I looked at a lot of the paintings by uh, Alan Lee and John Howe and mm -hmm. I, I sort of realised what, what they were doing with this character. But, in terms of getting smaller, we actually get bigger to get smaller. So we, we have massive boots and a big kind of muscle suit, prosthetics. And then Peter works his magic on the computer, so wow. we, we become... He's pretty amazing, isn't he? He really is a genius. He, I, but yeah. I don't use that word lightly, but he really is. Right. He thinks the world of you, too. I hear, a lot of, <laughs> I hear a lot of comments that he has about you. Like, this is breakthrough for you. This is big time. And you're on this show, and you're going to forget all about us. You become a superstar. I just you know, know it. I actually forgot it was Christmas. I saw Christmas trees, and I was like, yes, of course. Oh, of course, because you've been so busy. In, into the Hobbit, so. Well, well, tell me about your character. How do you say the, the proper name? Thorin Oakenshield. Okay, and what about this uh, character? I mean, he's had kind of questionable parents, kind yeah. of questionable background. Uh, he is bequeathed a revenge quest by his grandfather and his father, so he kind of comes into the story with a bit of a burden on his shoulders. And there was a danger of him being a cantankerous, bad-tempered dwarf. So mm -hmm. we looked for humor in the character. But in terms of his leadership, I actually became inspired by Peter Jackson himself because he leads his, his team with such dignity and a, a kind of quiet authority. And people come back and work with him again and again. So mm -hmm. I really took that as, as something that I'd like to bring to Thorin. And uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want to command respect. I wanted to earn loyalty. So that's really who he is. <laughs> Let's see you in action, Richard. Here we go as Thorin. Here we go. Was that a wolf? Are there, are there wolves out there? Wolves? No, that is not a wolf. <laughs> Work, Scout! Which means an orc pack is not far behind. Orc pack? Who did you tell about your quest beyond your kin? No one. Who did you tell? No one, I swear. What in Dodo's name is going on? You are being hunted. Wow. <laughs> so big. This is so big. Shot in New Zealand? That was all in New Zealand. And that was my own beard as well, which I'm very I'm going to talk to you about that. About. You are the only cast member that really didn't that grew your own beard, right? Well, I started with a with a fake beard, and then I re we had a break because Pete wasn't well for a while. So okay. I actually realized I had time to grow something very similar. And actually, what was strange was that my own beard came through with exactly the same gray oh, oh. of the beard that they created, which was it was serendipitous. It's, it was meant to be. It was that's meant for sure. To be. So why you're how, so you're walking the streets of wherever you live yeah. with this beard? Yeah. People are going, whatever happened to him? He's an actor. <laughs> There's something <laughs> not right with him, yeah. right? I mean, uh, so how long till you got back into the, you know, in filming? Was it a couple of months that you had to wait? Um, no, it was only it was only sort of six weeks. And actually, we stayed in New Zealand and continued our dwarf training. So um, okay, what is what? that? What's dwarf training? Dwarf training. <laughs> Actually, we worked with Terry Notary, who is a can Canadian. He's, oh. I think he w uh, trained with Cirque du Soleil. So, oh, okay. Um, it's, um, it was called boot camp, uh, where we wore these enormous boots, and Martin Freeman suggests that it was occasionally quite camp. Yes. Um, but, um, yeah, we learned how to run and to, to sort of fight, and Terry got us to wear these weight belts so that we, our center of gravity was lower because Peter wanted us to feel like warriors rather than diminutive people. So, I see. Um, it was a lot of fun. 
there was a lot of bonding with the dwarves, and we'd go out and drink afterwards. <laughs> it's a good time. The day. How about the premiere uh, that you attended in New Zealand? How many? The whole country showed up. Am did I you, right? Did you look see at look at this. No, I'm going to show. I don't know if you saw this footage. There's Peter right there, but I mean, were you? Look at this. Like this is huge stuff, and there's Kate Blanchett. Oh, so many of the stars there. How did you feel? Was it um, magical for you? On the day from my hotel room, I could see them rolling out that red carpet, and I, I sort of stood there, feeling really emotional because, yeah. you know, after 278 film days, so many of the local people had been involved in making the film, yeah. and they turned up on the day, and they were. You know, some of them were driving, some of them were sort of security. These guys that were our camera team, because they just wanted to be part of the celebration and the party. And For sure. Neil Finn played a, um, a set at the Embassy Theatre, and a, a hey. Boeing 747 flew over the red carpet. Wow. It was like a huge party. And it was, I suppose it was Peter's gift to Wellington to say, you're having the premiere. And, yes, and for they, sure. And they earned it. Well, and there you are looking very, very handsome. I know that you've got followers. They call themselves the Armitage Army. Yes, they do. What kind of fan mail do you get? Do you know what? They are the most lovely, supportive fan base I could possibly wish for. And they've been there for eight years, and I can't thank them enough, because they really do follow my work. And, I, you know, I often don't know what my schedule is, and I just go right. on the website, and they tell me where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> That's so good. Well, I tell you, we're very happy, and congratulations on such great success. It's just everyone's been waiting for this movie, and we've got some great news, because The Hobbit Unexpected Journey opens in theaters December 14th, and we got to talk to one of the major stars from the movie. Okay? There you go. Richard, a pleasure to meet you. All the best. Happy holidays. We have to say goodbye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Go see The Hobbit. Tomorrow on the show, our 10 days of giveaways continues with the top kids' toys of the season. Guests of the Maryland Dennis Show stay at the Intercontinental Toronto Center.